Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today with Bill.com. Thank you so much, Allie, and thank you, the TM group, for putting on this webinar of Bill.com and Divi. My name is Beth, and I'm the Senior Channel Manager here at Bill.com, and on the call with me today are Noel English and Ty Robbins, who are the solution consultant experts, we'll say, because they are the ones that will be going through the demo of the product. Before we jump into the demo, I want to give you a little background as to why Bill.com and Divi are a wonderful product for you and your organization. We really are that one-stop shop. As you look and understand as we go through the demo today, you'll see how we can help you with your accounts payable issues, accounts receivable, and even that spend management, really helping to simplify your operations and make sure that you have your budgets and cash flow exactly where you need it to be. We're gonna start talking about our first product today, which is Divi, and it's an all-in-one expense solution. With Divi, you can have business credit. You can get access to the funding you, meet, you need, no matter whatever the size of your business. Divi works for every business. Apply for a credit line in minutes and then start spending smarter with Divi cards for all employees. Divi also offers expense management where business purchases that can happen on a Divi card, you can easily categorize these on your phone with a few Quick, quick clicks. You don't have to worry about out-of-pocket reimbursements or taking a manual Excel spreadsheet and try and have to reconcile that to your credit card um, agency. You also have the ability for spend management. You can build a budget with your administrators and users and then find out what uh, funds are there and watch the spend come in exactly on target. With Divi, we have uh, customers that have said they've saved well over $10,000 on average on a month by using Divi. Also, it's a time saver. Well over 12 hours on average a month is saved by people that use Divi. Now, we'll go through a demo of Divi after a few more slides. We also want to talk about Bill.com. Well, Bill.com started out helping out a lot of accounting firms. In fact, 85% of the top U.S. accounting firms use Bill.com. And you may already be using Bill.com because 6 out of 10 of the U.S. financial institutions use Bill.com. So in the background, you may already be using the product through one of your financial institutions. We have thousands of customers on both Divi and bill.com. And we also have the ability to pay or get paid through bill.com. Now for Microsoft, we do integrate with GP as well as Dynamics 365 BC. So as you look through your payments and your spend, we are a trusted leader. Both bill.com and Divi, we work together for thousands of customers. Both products are very easy to set up. It's not something that you have to plan to do in months. It's actually days. And again, well over 121,000 customers use our solutions. And it makes it very easy for you to end your day knowing that you've got a trusted solution installed with your Dynamics product. So if you're dealing with spend management and cash management done in different systems. And you really don't have any visibility into cash until maybe a check clears or the credit card statement comes in. And the manual process to pay bills or chasing the approvals to close month to reconcile, it can be very tedious and cumbersome and time consuming. We can help solve those top problems by minimizing manual error, um, prone by minimizing manual error, proce error processes, um, eliminate expense, part, expense reports, and streamline internal processes. You can set up approval workflows and custom roles to actually suit your team. And actually, it's so nice because with Bill.com and Divi, you can take it with you anywhere you go because we have an app that works with your mobile device. So both products greatly reduce software and time costs, and it makes it very easy, again, for you to manage your day. 
with Divi, it's very different than any other expense software that you see within the market today. It's very simple. It's very easy to use. And the one thing to remember for you, it's free. How can we go wrong? So at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Ty, who's going to go through a quick demo of Divi. And then we'll come back and end with going through a quick demo of Bill.com. Beth, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Would it be all right if I share my screen real quick? You bet. Perfect. So kind of like Beth was saying, um, there's a few things that Divi does absolutely incredibly. One of the things that Divi does incredibly well is like Beth says, is it works for any type of business. Whether it's a sole proprietor or a business that has over 500 employees, Divi functions perfectly well. And like Beth mentioned, the ability to get approved for a credit line can take place within minutes and sometimes even quicker. <laughs> sometimes it's just instantly right after you fill out an application. The goal of Divi though, is to give your business the ability to make closing out the books a habitual or a continual process for the price of zero. A product that is completely free for you to use and completely free for your organization to grow with. Um, Beth, are you able to see my screen okay on the demo environment? Yes, I am. Perfect. So high level, what Divi is, Divi is both a corporate credit card and an expense management platform. A lot of the times when I'm speaking with clients after they've been on Divi for about three or four months, they come back to me and they say, Ty, Divi is literally like American Express or my Chase card and my Expensifier Concur came together and had a baby. And that's what Divi is. And I think there's no better way to put it than that. Divi High Level is an expense management software integrated with a smart credit card platform. Divi can be viewed from both a web app dashboard, as we're seeing here, and a mobile app. I want to walk you through some of the core functionalities of Divi and why it may be a good fit for your business. In today's day and age, one of the biggest pain points that we see with organizations trying to close their books is, reconcil is the reconciliation of credit card spend. On Divi, we would underwrite you for a line of credit and you would appear, the line of credit would appear here in the Divi dashboard. That line of credit could then be allocated to dynamic budgets. For example, let's go in and create a marketing budget for our, our organization. With our marketing budget, we can say we've allocated $10,000 to them and we can set it up to reset on a monthly basis. We could click next and we can add in our budget owner. I'll put myself in this case. And then we can select each employee associated with this budget. We'll come in and select Andrew, Drew, and let's do Jenny. So currently we have the manager of the marketing budget, Ty Robbins, and then the three employees who will be spending out of the marketing budget. We'll click next and we will create this dynamic budget. In Divi, we're able to have that line of credit at high level and then distribute the line of credit to different departments within our organization. For example, we've distributed $10,000 to our marketing budget where we have four employees within it. As you can see, um, Ty has the crown next to his name. He is the budget admin and has the ability to distribute these funds these $10,000 to any of their employees. Currently, each employee within this budget, Jenny, Drew, and Andrew, have $0 on their corporate credit card. For example, when Andrew, Drew, and Jenny log into their Divi app, or when they have their physical Divi credit card, they will see they have been allocated $0. By having $0, they are not able to spend. <laughs> Quite frankly, if they try to go and swipe their card for any expense on behalf of their business, that transaction will be rejected and not be processed because they have insufficient funds. What the budget admin on Divi can do is allocate these funds to each employee. For example, Ty could say, I know Jenny's gonna need $100 because she's sponsoring an event on behalf of our marketing team. 
And in addition, I know Andrew is going to be running our Facebook ads this month, and we're going to allocate him $5,000. You can see how we're distributing or divvying these funds to each employee. What is really great is each time the budget admin, in this case, Ty, distributes funds to his employees, they will receive a notification on their smart app that they've received the ability to spend the amount that their budget admin allocated to them. Let's say for this example, John is part of the sales budget. His budget admin distributed or divvied him $384.50. John now has the capability to spend up to that amount. Let's say John is part of this sales team and he's going to travel to Los Angeles. John then goes checks in at a hotel. As soon as John swipes his Divi credit card, he's going to receive a push notification, much like a text message, which will say, John, please complete this transaction. When John clicks into that notification on his smartphone, he will receive a push he will receive a notification that looks just like this saying john you have an incomplete transaction where you spent at the marriott hotel for $338.78 on this date with this card john can then go through and complete the transaction completing the transaction would be by uploading a photo of the receipt and then correctly coding this transaction to the general ledger John now receives a notification that he's completed this transaction. The really amazing part about Divi's platform and software is everything below this jagged line is 100% customizable to the needs of your organization. For example, in our current demo environment, we have three required fields. What budget is the employee spending out of? What department is he spending out of? And how to properly code this transaction to the general ledger. And then we can see below there's two optional fields, a receipt capture option and a note about the business expense. All below this jagged line is customizable based on your needs. You could have as many required fields as you need or want, or as little as you need or want. In addition, there can be simple logic built in to the required fields. For example, Let's say, for example, John is spending out of the sales budget. We could have a simple if-then logic saying, if he spends out of the sales budget, then he's automatically going to be spending out of the department sales and marketing. If he's spending out of sales and marketing, then he will see select general ledger codes or chart of accounts that are associated with the sales and marketing department. That way, the employee who is making business expenses will not get confused about all the chart of accounts, but will only see the chart of accounts that are relevant to him or her and the transactions that they do on a normal basis. When these transactions occur on their physical cards, the employees will be able to see their individual transactions on their mobile app, on the transaction tab, but the admin or those who are managers or owners of the business will be able to see all the transactions real time within this transactions tab. They can see A, what date the transaction incurred on, the name of the employees who spent the transaction, where the transaction incurred, the amount, all the way down to the MCC code. What is really great about this page is you can go through and improve transactions so that way when data flows into your ERP system, it all flows cleanly and smoothly. For example, we could come into the transaction that Andrew completed at Amazon. He spent $10 and we can say, let's see how Andrew coded this transaction. We see that he completed the workflow that is seen on the mobile app and we could go through and approve it. Seeing he spent $10, he selected out of the sales budget, and as an admin, you would have the ability to approve this workflow to then sync it into your ERP system. Currently, it would be a simple exported CSV file that you would then be able to create a template out of to then import into your accounting software. That way you can maintain the 
cleanliness of the data that you are putting through on Divi. The goal of this workflow on a transaction basis is to make it so employees don't have to hang on to those tedious receipts. They can rather just upload it right into the Divi software and have it housed in the cloud. B, the great perk about this is a lot of times employees don't want to fill out their expense reports. They're lazy. It's hard to remember. Or in fact, they just completely forget about it. And this puts a lot of work on the back office team where the back office team is hounding on the sales team. Hey, where are your sales receipts? Please get them in. Or can you please get us your expense reports? The goal here is to make that expense reporting process a breeze and make it a continual thing that happens the moment after a credit card is swiped. Up to this point, we ran through a little bit of high level how Divi is a corporate credit card and an expense management platform. Kind of the structure and the workflow of what takes place when an employee has a physical Divi card and can swipe their card and what things they can do to complete a transaction. In addition to this, Divi has a full virtual card platform created on its both its web app and mobile app, where an organization could come in and create a virtual credit card. Let's say, for example, um, to make it relevant to each one of us, let's say maybe for our Amazon Prime subscription. We can say, hey, our Amazon Prime subscription is typically coming out of our company budget, and it costs us $100 a month. And I know each month is going to cost us $100. We could come down and say, hey, Ty is the one who owns this Amazon um, subscription for our business, and we can create the card. When we create this virtual card, we have a completely unique 16-digit credit card number that can be used to then copy and paste into the point of sale at Amazon.com. The goal with these virtual cards is to have a one-to-one -one relationship with a virtual card to an individual vendor for two reasons. Reason one, sometimes our subscriptions get overcharged. In this case, if our subscription amount for Amazon Prime is $100, if they try to overcharge us or accidentally double charge us, our card has insufficient funds and that will get declined. For the second reason, let's say for example, there's a data breach with Amazon's website and somehow our credit card number gets compromised and there begins to be fraud on this card. The fraudster will only have access to $100 and not our entire credit line. And in addition, what we can simply do is say, hey, we're gonna freeze this virtual card. There is fraud taking place on it. We don't want it to get spent anymore. Now we have a frozen card that will no longer serve and we can create a new one for Amazon while each of our other credit cards out are gonna function just fine. In addition, if fraud is taking place, we could even just delete this card at any time. Or if we solve our problem, we can unfreeze this individual virtual card. And now our virtual card is ready to run and has the ability to spend $100. Again, these virtual cards are great for anything that is reoccurring or subscription-based and is a great tool to fight off fraud and a great tool to organize all the reoccurring expenses that are taking place within an organization. One of the common questions I get up to this point in, the, in our Divi demo is, Ty, it all looks great, but what if my employee pays with cash? What takes place then? What would take place is that employee can come onto his dashboard at Divi, and he could come in and he can submit a new reimbursement. He would come in on the right-hand corner here and select new reimbursement, whether it be a mileage reimbursement that your company has set up for uh, the driving on behalf of employees, or in this case, the employee paid out in cash. The employee could say, hey, I went to Walmart and I spent $22 on behalf of the business for office supplies. I spent it on September 14th and it was out of our general budget and I needed office supplies. They could come in and they can attach a receipt to this request. And because I'm in a demo account, they don't want me requesting it. But as soon as they would click request here, it would come into a two-step approval workflow like we can see here. 
The budget admin can approve it. And then at the admin or more of the manager or owner level of the Divi account, once they approve the transaction here, it would come into the ready to pay bucket. As soon as it enters the ready to pay bucket, typically it takes two to four business days for an ACH to get paid to the employee as a reimbursement directly to the employee's bank account. And as Beth said at the beginning of um, this webinar, every function within Divi is 100% free. Um, everything from the mobile app to getting a line of credit to using the reimbursement budgeting and virtual card platforms, it's 100% free for your organization to take advantage of. The way this is possible is Divi makes money on the interchange. Each time a credit card is swiped, there's a small fee that the vendor where you're spending owes to the bank. That small fee is called interchange. It ranges from anywhere between 0.5% upwards to 2.5, even 3% at times. With that interchange, Divi takes a small portion as revenue. And with the larger portion, we give it back in rewards. As a corporate credit card, each time you're spending on your Divi credit card, you're going to be accruing reward points that can be redeemed as travel points, cash back, statement credit, and for gift cards. You can choose each of the four categories when and how you want. And typically the cash back can range anywhere between one and upwards to 1.75% cash back depending on the volume of spend. Super excited to walk you through any questions that you might have. Please feel free to reach out. Ali will provide my information um, on the site. So if any questions arise about the Divi platform, I am always more than happy to walk you through your special use case, how the implementation process looks on our end, and how easy it is to get Divi set up and running for your organization. Ali, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present today. Perfect, thanks Ty. As we shift gears a little bit, um, we're gonna talk about next how your AP process probably is a little in inefficient. Your manual work creates a lot of inefficiency and, and being able to automate that with bill.com in a four easy step process is going to help your day, help you be able to pay your vendors on time and ensure that your company continues to grow as you are putting your right resources in the correct place. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Noel English, who will do a demo of Bill.com. Thank you, Beth. I'll go ahead and jump into my demonstration here. So as Beth mentioned, I'll be covering that four-step process within the platform. That's going to start here with the inbox, which comes equipped with the intelligent virtual assistant designed to save you time in terms of uh, coding and getting things routed for approval. So once we complete that, create a bill and have it routed for approval. I'll log in as an approver only user. We do have six preset roles within the platform. So just to show you a little bit of the separation of duties within bill.com, these can also be customized as well. Once we complete the approval, we'll go into the payment side of things. We'll talk about the different payment types that we offer, as well as funding methods available for our clients. And then once we complete that, we, because Bill.com has money transmitter licenses in all 50 states, we have the ability to get things like proof of deposit, additional tracking, or being able to cancel or avoid transactions as well. Let's go ahead and jump right in here to the inbox. Uh, first things first is getting that document into the platform so we can start extracting information from it. And we've got a couple different ways to do that. We have a dedicated email address with the bill.com domain. So vendors can send documents directly in or those that uh, they might be working with that may not be users in the platform can certainly forward over documents as well. But we can also drag and drop files as users, upload files directly through our own um, internal hard drives. And then of course, we can also utilize our dedicated mobile app. So for a little bit more on the go, we don't have a scanner handy. We have a physical invoice in our hands. We can take a picture of it or maybe even send in a screenshot from a text or an email. But regardless of method, it takes us about 15 to 20 seconds per page on average, just to read that high level information. And before we even start processing a bill from the document, 
we start running a couple checks on the back end. One being duplicate detection. So we are reading the vendor name, invoice number, and we're going to double check against that vendor record to see if the invoice number is being used. If so, we flag it. And we also provide a hyperlink to the original record should we want to investigate further. We can also work with multiple page documents. So if someone's using like a scan to email functionality, they put like four or five bills in a single PDF. We have the ability to auto split that for them just by reading a different vendor name or invoice number on each page and split that out. But of course, you can always undo that and manage that manually on top of it. And lastly, we do have unlimited document storage within the platform. So it's not just about bringing in the transactional documents, but you can bring in things like tax documentation, contracts, agreements, receipts, and you do have the ability to store them in different areas. For example, a W-9, I can put that underneath a vendor and put that in their documents tab, or maybe save it as an internal company document where I can select a general folder from our main documents tab to the left here. But let us go ahead and jump into bill creation and we'll see a little bit more of that intelligent virtual assistant in action. Now the intelligent virtual assistant is comprised of a couple different technologies and I'll cover those here. The first one is an AI taught OCR or optical character recognition. And that's a tool that's basically reading image files. So PDFs, PNGs, JPEGs, and it is locating for um, high level information. So it is reading for the vendor name, it's also picking up the invoice number, invoice date, the due date, and the total amounts. Everything else underneath that from bill description, expense detail, approver sequencing, these three areas are coming from a different technology we refer to as smart data entry. And smart data entry is triggered based off of that vendor. So once the vendor has been read off the document or selected by a user, it takes the last bill created for the vendor and simply applies all of the coding directly here. And if I make any changes on this particular bill, it remembers that for the next bill that comes across for the vendor. So it's kind of like an ever-changing template that evolves and grows with that vendor relationship. And the final technology we have here from the document is our click and capture tool. So there are areas of predicted text that the OCR was able to pick up that we can highlight over, either expand or narrow down the selection, depending on what we'd like to pull off of the document. All we have to do is click into the highlighted area, copies the text for us and then click again into the empty text field that we want it to paste into. So great for things like split amounts or maybe grabbing descriptions here, or if we even need assistance with coding, we can grab keywords or start typing them in. And of course, uh, we'll pull them down from the drop down here from what was brought in from the accounting system. Now down here at the bottom is where we can route for approval. This is something that we can manage manually. We can select specific individuals. We can take those individuals and create an either or option by putting them in approver groups. So this way everyone in the group has access to the bill, but only requires one person to approve it. Now we can also automate the appro approval routing just by setting up bill approval policies. And just to show you a little bit of what that looks like, we can set up multiple criteria based on how that bill is going to be coded. So whether it's based off of certain segments like departments, locations, classes, or maybe by specific vendors or group of vendors as we can select several in one policy. And we can also do amount thresholds, whether it's for a specific line item amount or the bill amount in total with some additional logic behind it. And so as the bill gets coded and meets this criteria or if it meets criteria across multiple policies, it sets the approvers for you in real time. Uh, but you can always click and drag to reorder or remove and replace. Um, however, if it is my, in by policy, we cannot remove or replace. You'll just have to update the policy there. Last section here is the notes section. This is really the internal communication tool. So any instructions or questions can be left directly here. We also have the ability to tag specific users so they get an instant email or push notification with those details. This way they can reply back or take action fairly quickly. But I'll just leave a quick note here. And that does complete bill creation process. So I'll just click save and close. Now, when I do this, we run a secondary duplicate check just in case someone decided to create an invoice while I was in the middle of this screen here. And we also make sure that the total of the expenses and items match up with the total amount on the bill. And once we save it, we'll get a success notification. That bill has now been routed for approval. My approvers have been notified waiting uh, that we have the bill waiting for their approval which they can do so uh, from our web application or mobile application, which I'll go ahead and log in as here. 
and show you what it looks like from that approver perspective. Now, the intention for this role is for someone to go in, simply approve the bills based off of coding or to approve it to allow it to be paid, and then kind of move on with the rest of their workday. But again, you can always customize these roles as needed or provide different types of roles that we have available. And the way we've designed it for them is to give them as much or as little touch as they prefer. So if they'd like to just simply review the documentation, they can pull it up very quickly. Uh, they can see the latest notes behind it as well. If they need to customize their columns to have more or less information, that's available to them. Um, and if this is all they really need to see, they can either click approve here to the right or maybe select several invoices at a time and approve them. Now we do have those approvers that want to see everything side by side, so they can click directly into the invoice number. This puts them in the slideshow view uh, where they can move up and down the queue just by clicking previous or next here at the top or by taking action. Now, of course, they have access to all the details directly here, but they can also continually add notes, maybe ask some questions here if need be. They do not have the ability out of the box to edit the bill, but you can always customize the role or give them a different role entirely with that permission. Uh, but if the intention is not to give them edit permission and if, if there is something majorly incorrect, they have the ability to deny the bill and select a reason. The reason goes into the audit trail, and then we require for them to put in their own words and context exactly what's incorrect about it. And this way, everyone's on the same page, using the same language, and we're no longer having to uh, hunt down that approver as to why they specifically denied something. And whatever gets entered in here will show up as a temporary banner at the top. Um, and of course, it will be in the notes section, so you can always go back and review it uh, if you need to go back historically. But if all looks good, we just click approve, takes us to the next bill within the queue. One other thing to note is we do provide uh, audit trails for the approvers if there was a change made on the bill. So at any time, they can really go directly into the audit trail. Uh, they can take a look at who created the bill, when it was created. For some of our integrations, we have a two-way sync. So those will also be reflected here as well if changes came from that direction. But as the approver approves it, we'll see that user's name and timestamp. And as the payer goes in to pay it, we'll see that user's name and timestamp as well. Uh, but let me go ahead and approve one more bill here, and then we will go into the payment side of things here. Now that we have those bills approved, oh, I did want to show a little bit of the mobile application. I know we did mention that. So as far as everything we've done up until this point, uh, getting documents in, creating bills, approving them, and we're going to jump into payments here in a minute. But all four of those can be done within the mobile app. Uh, we generally found most users are using it for approvals, so it is a very similar workflow. It can be a very simple list view where they can swipe right to approve, swipe left to deny and leave their reason, but they can also push into the transaction further. If they'd like to see all those details, the full breakdown of expenses, uh, they're able to click on the thumbnail so they can pull up the supporting documentation and have a look at that as well, and then just approve here or deny at the bottom. And again, should they deny, still requires that additional context. So now that we have those bills approved, we'll jump into the bill payment side of things. The default view here is going to be all bills that are fully approved that are unpaid or partially paid. And we can filter a little bit further, maybe by a specific vendor that's high volume, or let's say we'd like to filter by, you know, everything that's due within the next week. So this way we can get those scheduled out and rest easy. Uh, but pretty much from here, you're just selecting which bills you'd like to pay. You'll also see that there's all sorts of different payment types for these vendors, just dependent on how they're set up within the platform. So starting out, if all we have is an address for the vendor, they're automatically set up via check. But the goal here at bill.com is to get vendors onto electronic forms of payment. So we have the ability to invite these vendors to join the bill.com network of nearly 5 million businesses. And we'll even double check some of the vendors that we already have within our network against the vendors that were brought in. Um, at which point, if they don't want to go through the invite, you can always enter in their banking information manually and manage it directly in their vendor profile. Another payment type you may run into is what's called Vendor Direct. This is a virtual card program uh, for vendors to self-enroll in. This payment type is at no cost to our customers here at Bill.com. Um, and what we do is we'll just ACH the funds out of the bank account or funding method, and then we will go ahead and send out a digital credit card to that vendor. This is typically for larger vendors or uh, household names that prefer those credit card payments. And then we also support international wires. Now we can wire in the local currency, we can wire to over 130 countries currently. 
And if we wire in the local currency, it's no additional fee, just the exchange rate. And however, if we do have a situation where we need to wire US dollars to a foreign bank account, there's a flat wire fee for that. But from here, we're just selecting our process date, which is the payment date. So this is the date the funds will leave the bank account or funding method. This is the date that we notify vendors that uh, payments are on the way. And then of course, we process those payments on the back end. So checks go out the door, we make sure positive pay is taken care of, take care of that NACHA file, and of course the, the cards and wires there too. But you can select what this day is going to be. We just have this preset based off that due date to ensure it arrives a couple days ahead of time. And you do that individually or in bulk here at the top. Now, if I'm funding directly out of my bank account, the soonest I can process is the next available business day. So in this case, I like to process payments on Tuesday. So I'll just do this in bulk from here. That'll update the process date as well as the arrival date. From there, we can edit the payment amount. If we need to issue any partial payments, we can also work with vendor credits and have them created and applied here in bill.com. And then lastly, selecting your funding method. Predominantly here in bill.com, that's going to be the bank account, which we can connect to directly. You can add multiple bank accounts, pinpoint who has access to pay out of which account in which they go through a verification process. But we have two other funding methods. We have what's called bill.com balance. This allows for you to process payments immediately. So I don't have to wait for the next available business day. And you can pre-fund that balance using ACH or wire. That also accelerates the deposit timing for any ACH payments that go out. So instead of it being a two-day turnaround time, it becomes a same day or next day deposit. And we have that same functionality with using a credit card such as Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. There's a 2.9% fee associated with that, but also allows for you to process payments on weekends. But if all looks good from here, we click review and pay in the upper right hand corner. We do, however, have the option if we know that these bills were paid outside of bill.com, we just need to create that payment record. We do have that capability in which you can tell us if you want us to sync that record into the accounting system or tell us not to. Seeing that we're paying through bill.com today, I'll click on review and pay. That'll take me to the remittance screen. So we're double checking the information, making sure mailing addresses are correct that email addresses are up to date as we'll be sending that remittance directly to that email address. The memo field is editable up to 80 characters, but we pre-populate two fields automatically. One's going to be the account number from the vendor's profile if there is one, and the invoice number coming from that invoice being paid unless there's multiple invoices combined in a single payment. For international wires, we can double check the exchange rate, which does update hourly. But if for whatever reason I'm not ready to pay something, I can always send it back to the unpaid bills queue and I don't have to start my process over again. If all looks good from here, we submit those payments, we'll get a success notification, hyperlink to manage them further into the payments out screen, which we'll go into here next. And once again, because bill.com has those money transmitter licenses, it's also good to note that we completely secure and mask the banking information from the client. So those checks that go out, it doesn't have their banking information on it. That'll be that of bill.coms. The rest of the information, of course, between them and their vendor, but this allows for them to manage those payments further in our platform. So if let's say we have a payment that's scheduled out, we need to send that bill back, we need to get that fixed up. We have the ability to cancel that payment before the funds go out. Uh, we'll have up until the business day before the process day. But if funds have left and vendor has been notified, but vendor reaches out and says, oh, by the way, my payment information changed, we'll need to get that payment to the new area there. You have the option to stop the payment in flight, decide to either return funds back to the bank account or reissue a new payment. And then on the other side of this, we can provide just view access into the payments. So if you have someone who's a little bit more of a, a vendor facing role where vendors might reach out and ask, where in the process is my payment or can I get that proof of deposit? They can go directly into the payment confirmation screen. We'll have a timeline tracker at the top to understand where in the process it's at. And then once it does deposit, we provide that proof of deposit. And for checks, that'll include the front and back image of the check in PDF format. For ACH, that includes the batch ID and the trace ID. For those international wires, we'll have a full page of wire tracing information. And for those vendor direct virtual cards, we'll provide the card information as well as the vendor's confirmation number, which is excellent for tracking. Two other areas to note when it comes to managing payments in bill.com, and because we're sending these payments out and masking the bank account, we also have an uncashed check queue that we call expiring payments. 
that'll list out how many days a payment has been outstanding and how many days until it expires. Um, any failed payments we also process as well. So if a check is undeliverable or ACH fails at the receiving bank, that'll come back to us here at bill.com. We notify our users, we'll make sure those checks are shredded. And then of course they can take actions such as sending out a new payment after fixing instructions, or they can decide just to return funds back to the bank accounts. Uh, but that does complete the four-step process within bill.com. Beth, I'll go ahead and turn things back over to you. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Noel, and thank you, Ty, for a fantastic demo. Um, we have a few questions that have popped up. So one of the first questions is, do you have to pay invoices out of bill.com, or can you just use it to approve invoices? And Noel, I'll turn that question back to you. Yeah, excellent. So uh, absolutely, that's something you can do. You don't necessarily have to use this for payments. We have had we have clients that use this just for the processing and approvals, and then they'll just mark everything as paid. We have some clients where they prefer creating bills somewhere else and just want to sync them directly into bill.com for approval and payment or just simply payment. So really, at any point in the process you'd like to utilize our platform, you absolutely can. And that's kind of the benefit of having a two-way sync when it comes to transactions. Thank you so much, Noel. I see there's another question out here in regards to how do the integrations work with Divi and bill.com? Now, I, I would assume this would be specific for uh, the customer base that the TM group has, which is Dynamics GP as well as Dynamics 365 BC. So Noel, if you would like to take the bill.com side and then we'll have Ty jump in on the Divi side. Sounds good. Let me go ahead and share my screen here again. So as far as Business Central goes, how that will work is when we first connect, we start pulling in, of course, your segments there. So I'll start with the chart of accounts, and that's a one-way sync to bill.com. So you'll continue to manage them within Business Central there. Uh, locations are native on both systems, so that is a two-way sync. So whatever you have listed there will pull in. Now, of course, when it comes to jobs, departments, classes, and employees, these are labels here within bill.com but you can change the shortcut dimension code to anything you already have set up or established uh, within Business Central, and that will sync directly to those labels. As we get into things like your vendors, customers, and if you're using items, those will pull in for customers and vendors, that'll be a two-way sync. So you can create or edit within bill.com and we'll sync the changes over uh, into Business Central for you. As it pertains to bills and purchase invoices, those are two-way sync. So again, create in bill.com or within Business Central. The bill payments are one-way sync out of bill.com, which is why we have that Marcus paid option. So any payments you need to record or payments that you want to run through bill.com, uh, we will sync that up for you. Vendor credits are two-way sync, so you can create them in either system. Just one caveat to that currently is that the credit application does not sync, so you will need to apply that manually in both sides. Then as we get into the AP funds transfer, this is basically how we manage the movement of the funds. So as you're paying those bills, we'll sync over a journal entry for that. We have a clearing account for all the individual payment records. So you can keep track of all the payments that are flowing through bill.com. Uh, but even on the return of funds, if you were to cancel or void a payment record, or um, not a record, but uh, the actual funds and tell us to push it back into the bank account, we'll make sure that gets synced over as well. But the actual void or cancellation of the payment record is something we can't currently touch with Microsoft once that transaction has been posted. Do have a receivables module, just very similar in terms of sync structure, but workflows can definitely vary there. Uh, but running a sync's pretty simple. You just go to the sync icon in the upper right-hand corner, click on sync now, it'll run while you continue to work. But if no one runs that sync within 24 hours, it'll go ahead and run once on its own. And we also want to cover Great Plains. Uh, well, I think we'll just save that. If someone is interested in, in Great Plains, we can definitely cover that during a, a disco or demo. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip that over the same question over to Ty. So, Ty, if you want to talk about the integration with Divi and Dynamics 365 and BC, Dynamics 365 BC, that would be great. Yeah, Beth. I'm also going to share my screen real fast. So, the integration we have set up with Dynamics at the moment would be you would log in to your Divi account, you'd have your dashboard pulled up. You would click on the transactions tab so you can see all the credit card history from each of your employees and virtual cards that will appear here. 
you would be able to, when you sign up on Divi, we will be able to link you up with an implementation specialist at no cost. Our implementation specialist will work with you to figure out what are the data points that you want to collect within your Dynamics account. And then we would have a tailored template that we would have an easy CSV export that CSV would then be downloaded. We would then use that exact CSV to then import into your Dynamics account. Um, we could bring up this um, CSV file. Give me one second. So you can just see what it looks like raw. If it will load up on my computer. It's probably a little bit of a larger um, file. And then this way you can see each field that is um, captured when an employee spends on Divi. And then this is the way that you and your implementation specialist um, will work together to tailor this CSV file, everything from the transaction ID, if you're splitting transactions, the day it incurred. Um, you would use this CSV file with your implementation specialist to tailor it to the needs that you want to then flow into your Dynamics ERP system? Great question. Perfect, thank you so much, Ty. Uh, a couple other questions we have, and this is another Divi one, Ty. What happens when there is a refund from a vendor on the Divi card? Like uh, their, their example is they paid for something, but it was returned or the hotel charge was less for some reason. Yeah, great question. I love this one. So what happens on Divi is it's the exact same process that would happen on whether you're using an American Express card, City card, or Chase card. That would come through in your transactions tab on the Divi dashboard, and it would come through as a negative number showing that it has been returned or refunded back to your Divi account. Perfect. Thank you, Ty. Uh, looks like we only have two more questions. Uh, does Divi and Bill.com work with both Androids and iPhones? And I believe the answer is yes, but I'll turn yes. it to Noble and Ty. That's and correct for Bill.com, and I assume so for Divi. But. Yeah, exactly right. We're, we're inclusive to both Apple and Android. You're exactly right. Awesome. Well, the last question today, this is probably going to go to Noel. Noel, it's a, the question is, does Bill.com work with binary streams, MEM, or multi-entity management product on GP? So, yes, we have that in beta currently. If you have clients that are interested in that, we can certainly get them on the beta with GP. Perfect. Well, thank you, Noel and Ty. I don't see any other questions out here, but I'm going to leave it open just for a few more seconds before we finish out the day. So uh, for anyone that's attending or will be reviewing this webinar, if you decide that you would like to see a demo of Bill.com or Divi, feel free to reach out to your rep at the TM group. And they absolutely know how to get a hold of me where I can um, uh, create a lead for our team. And somebody from our team will be following up in regards to setting up a disco, a demo, whatever it is that you need to understand um, how Bill.com and Divi can fit your needs. So let's see, there hasn't been any other questions out there. So I'm going to turn it back over to Allie. Again, from the team here at Bill, Bill.com and Divi, we give you so much thanks and uh, appreciate your time today. So Allie, I'm going to hand it back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I just want to give a huge thanks again for Bill.com for being here today and presenting. And thanks, everyone, for attending. Um, I will be, like I said, sending this recording out. So if you have any further questions, you can send them over after you watch the recording. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.